My name is Diana and we are here in Oakland, California. This is our Airbnb Plus tiny house in our backyard. So I live um, in our main house and I have a, two kids and a dog and this is what used to be a falling down cinder block garage and we turned it into this nice Airbnb guest space. So I'm excited to give you a tour. We're about 280 square feet in here and we it used to be it really was a falling down garage and we converted it um, four years ago we have very light wood floors we decided to keep the windows just the natural raw wood without painting them on the interiors and then we have white bedding and just like very simple colors so the theme in here I think color wise is wood white and then some pops of blue so we designed this with California coastal organic modern style in mind. There are seven clear story windows up top. And then there's two windows here over the desk. There's the two French doors at the front and a big, um, another big floor to ceiling window. And then we have a skylight back in the bathroom. So even though it's a tiny space, we have so much light coming in, sometimes too much light. Um, so I tell guests to bring an eye mask when they, when they want to sleep in. We couldn't really expand into our backyard anymore. So instead, we decided to expand vertically. And we lifted up one side of this um, ceiling. So it's exposed beams and it just feels spacious because it's vertically spacious, even though it's a small space on the floor. The desk and the, the bed frame, which is just a plain uh, pine wood, and then the chair that's in the corner. There are a lot of pieces that are Ikea and are really affordable. And then I decided to splurge on a few things that I think are really worth it. So definitely the textiles, like adding some indigo blue handmade um, pillows and this mud cloth hanging behind me on the blanket ladder. Those are all from individual artists on Etsy that sell crafts and then doing um, like custom shades that really are easy to use and they were expensive but um, we made sure that guests have enough privacy in this space. Also added a nice photograph of Point Reyes, uh, one of my favorite beaches up the California coast. There are a lot of plants everywhere. There's a lot of little places where we have art. And I think that it's so important to ground the space in where you are. And for us, we wanted folks to feel when they came here that they were in our backyard and that there were plants everywhere and that they had a sense of being in California. So we have guidebooks about California. We have ocean art. And I've stayed in Airbnbs where the space is beautiful, but it's kind of lacking personality. And I wanted to infuse this space with personality.
one of the reasons we built our tiny house in our backyard is that we're living in 1,350 square feet, which is plenty for us. But in order for us to have guests and host relatives or friends who want to come visit, we wanted to have a guest room and we really didn't have space anymore in our house for a guest room. So this casita was an old falling down garage. We thought we'll, we'll also rent it as an Airbnb to, to make back the money that we spent on building it. And so we did make that money back in about four years. So this is our tiny little kitchen and we have the smallest sink that I could find and this nice uh, faucet. And we also have a few different ways to make coffee. I think that's really important for guests. So a lot of guests use our French press and then we also have an espresso machine and a hot water tea kettle. A few other appliances I'll point out. We do keep a toaster in the drawer and then we have a mini fridge in here where we keep um, sparkling water and beer and rosé for guests to enjoy. For the first three years that we had this, we did not have this tile. And even just the littlest splashes and guests making coffee, this wall got kind of stained and it didn't look good. It was hard to clean. So last year we added this beautiful fire clay tile. Fire clay is the brand. And uh, it's just, it blends in well with the rest of the space and it makes cleaning really easy. In these drawers, we have a lot of things that people would need, like um, a whole collection of cutting boards, wine glasses, all the dishware they would need, a whole tea selection. And then I have a drawer that is fun games, like Scrabble and Bananagrams, and also uh, co adult coloring books and some colored pencils, um, inspired by a place that I stayed down the coast that had a whole collection of art that you could do. I loved that. Um, and then we also keep a drawer of sort of um, emergency supplies, like a first aid kit, ponchos if it's raining and you don't have a rain jacket, an extra umbrella, and charging cords and things like that. So I think even though it's a tiny little kitchenette, we have all the essentials in here. A lot of our friends ask us, "Is it what is it like hosting on Airbnb? What is it like having strangers come in through your side gate and come stay in your backyard? We have little kids who are playing on our deck. And honestly, we've never had any issues. I feel like all of our guests are respectful, they're polite, they're friendly. And we also, you know, sometimes we see them, sometimes we don't even see them because we're busy in our house and they're not here to like, um, hang out all day inside the tiny house. They're here to visit their relatives or go see Oakland or go try new restaurants. Um, so some people we don't even see and some people we do and we have really made friends with some of our guests. And I think our kids are little so I'm always kind of watching them and um, our kids know not to go in the casita because that's where guests are and our dog also knows not to go in the casita because she sheds a lot. and. We've never had an issue. We love hosting strangers and we also, I think, are, I hope, teaching our kids to share our space and we encourage them to wave hello. They usually want to like run out onto the back deck and say hello to the guests. So I think that we're teaching them to welcome strangers and to welcome anybody, no matter where they're coming from or, um, you know, what their race is or what their background is. We are very clear that we want to welcome everybody and you know if they don't even speak English that's okay we can figure it out and I think it's helping our kids to to understand that this space is for sharing. Mm -hmm.
are in our tiny little hallway and we have an Ikea Pox, P-A-X, unit that is a huge double closet and it's just really nice for storage. This was a fun project I did last year when we were becoming Airbnb Plus. I decided to upgrade the closet by adding wallpaper and a little Oakland flag just to make the closet feel a little fancier. Here I have a little outdoor dining kit. So it's a basket which has a tablecloth, some plastic wine glasses, an outdoor lantern, things that people might want uh, to eat outside and have a nice little picnic. And then this is our own storage. We just have some camping gear and diving gear and our vacuum under there and our camp stove. And over on this side is where we keep extra sheets and towels. We have terry cloth robes for guests. We have a basket full of slippers that people can use because we ask folks to not have shoes in the casita. We have a big fan and then just extra blankets and sheets are, are below. And that's it, that's our tiny hallway. We decided to do a barn door to the bathroom because it doesn't swing into the hallway or sit open in the hallway and close off that space or it also doesn't sit in the bathroom and it's just such a good space saver to have a sliding door and we thought um, we couldn't do a pocket door it's not a big enough uh, wall space to do it and we just love the look of this big barn door so um, i highly recommend that for small spaces in order to make the bathroom feel big we we prioritized having a little extra space in here and then we also added the skylight and we also kept the colors really simple in here, so all neutral. So we have gray floor tile, we have white tile in the shower, and then just this very simple wood and white vanity, which is also from Ikea. And just little touches of color are only the green plants. So we added the teak bench in the shower with a plant on it. The other thing I like that we've done all around the space is add hooks. So there's hooks in the hallway, there's the towel rack here, and then I recently added these two robe hooks just so people have space to, to hang wet towels or a jacket. I think also doing a glass door um, and keeping the whole thing just very simple glass and tile up to the ceiling makes the shower feel even bigger and makes the space feel bigger. And then also uh, I would mention that in the shower, this is Heath tile and Heath tile is very expensive, but I went and bought the seconds, like the, the extra that somebody didn't use from a project. So it was actually very affordable to use Heath seconds. And then on the floor did just little white penny tile. Having like an all white shower just makes it feel really big. have a small backyard it's less than a thousand square feet and we didn't want to lose our whole backyard so we basically stayed with the same footprint as the old garage we expanded it a few feet more into the backyard but we wanted to make sure to think about how we would use the space and how we would design the backyard for our family to use after we built the the tiny house so I think it's important to think about, you know, how are you going to manage the backyard space around it so that the backyard still feels spacious and like you don't have this big building uh, that you're always staring at. What I like about having this tiny house in our yard is that for right now it works for us to have Airbnb guests and to host people who we don't know coming into our backyard and staying with us. Sometimes we make friends and we definitely are making a good side income from it. But I know that in the future, as our kids get older, right now our kids are four and six, and maybe when they're in high school, our house is gonna feel really little and we might stop using Airbnb and just have it for our own space. Maybe it'll be an extra play space or a place they can go watch TV with their friends or go do their homework. Or maybe one of them is gonna be living out here when they're in high school or older. So we know that for us, it was an investment also in just having more space in our house. And then maybe again later, when someday when kids are out of the house, we would do Airbnb again. 
we are Rockridge Casita on Instagram. We also have a website. So we're on the World Wide Web at rockridgecasita.com. And you can feel free to email me there. Also with any questions about building an ADU or a tiny house, I love talking about design and Airbnb hosting and, um, and tiny houses. So get in touch and please come stay with us. We're in Oakland, California, and we're right near the Berkeley campus and the Berkeley border, and we love hosting. So I hope you come stay with us sometime.